Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing angles. <laughs> <laughs> but before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We're drinking bourbon barrel quad. From the Boulevard Brewing Company in Kansas City, Missouri. You know, this is why we can't have nice things. You know is, that, right? Is, is, is this why? <laughs> Kansas City, Missouri. Listen, I'm taking this shit on the road. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Let's see here. What is the ABV? 11.2. 11.2% ABV. AB. Hey, um, ABV? I can't speak today. It's, a, it's the second show, so it's the uh, third beer, and that's, uh, you know. Almost enough? That's almost enough. John, this is a quad... We got we to gotta do this every time. What did you do to my beer? Explain to me what a quad is again, John. Of course, John. this is my fault. Um, so a quad is a Belgian tradition of beer. Uh, it's a rating system, uh, and it has to be that style of beer. However, uh, there is single, double, triple, and quad, and that number denotes how flavorful the beer yep. is. So. Yeah, so expecting uh, good things from uh, usually from this corresponds beer. to ABV as well, but doesn't necessarily have to. Yeah, it doesn't have to, but uh, but 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 you hope it does. You know, you you hope for this. All right, so we are going to be talking about angels today. And shit, uh, I got that wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, angels, not angles. Uh, John's going to do a show on angles later <laughs> on. Um, Acute, obtuse, all the angles. But today we're talking. Obtuse is my favorite. Uh, yeah, I, I I I fully believe that. Uh, um, it's the only one you know about. But I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you why I came into this is because there was a, uh, an article that came out this last week, and it comes out every year, you know, that there's something. But it said that 75% of Americans uh, believe in angels. And, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't... I bet not that many believe in angels. <laughs> I was just looking at that and, and, and wondering about it because I'd like to know how they asked the question first off right. and, and who they asked, but... But I, I don't imagine that's far off um, in all reality. When you figure that, a, that, that, that you know, better than half of, uh, of Americans are uh, identify themselves as uh, religious. Well, as religious and, and really as Judeo Christian. Um, so you've got. Is it more than half that are Judeo Christian? More than now? half identify themselves as Judeo Christian. I, um, I would like to know, though, which angels they believe in. Is it the six winged, nine eyed. A uh, fiery sword gonna fuck you up, angels? Yeah, yeah. Is is it or, or the the little cute ones, little cute babies with the because those the, are more like yeah. fairies to me. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I we're gonna talk about those. So uh, exactly, what is an angel to you? Fairies I'm, I, are different. I'm. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll keep the comedy to they, a they minimum. Tend, they tend to work. If you started pants. out, appreciate it. Uh, you were laughing, bitch. I was laughing at you, not with you. I was laughing with you. Um, so, what's an angel to you? I'm just, I, I'm kind of curious okay. because you brought it up that there's, there's all kinds of ideas. Yeah, I mean, to me, uh, the general term angel is a supernatural being who is on the force of good. Okay. Yeah. You know. Well, I, I don't think they necessarily have to be on the force of good. I mean, there are um, pollen angels. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the pollen angels. you got to love those. Uh, Sorry, fallen angels. That was an inside joke that nobody got. Uh, I, I, read my, uh, I read my notes into, the, into my phone, and uh, I was reading fallen angels, and I looked down at my, my notes, and they said pollen angels, which is something totally different. But, <laughs> but I think that term actually proves my point. It actually it, it, it doesn't rebut it at all because we normally call those demons or sometimes man or whatever but the fact that we have to give an adder to an angel who is not good yeah. says that angel itself is good and we are now describing a not good angel yeah yeah what I, what i find interesting about angels is um, the idea now whether you go with the name or not but the concept of a messenger of the gods, which is what what what, what angel literally translates as. Uh, mm -hmm. It comes from Old English angle e n g e l, uh, which which is is it comes out of uh, Greek with the ag agalos. You know, when you start seeing all this, all this means means uh, messenger. Uh, in in ancient Persian, it was agaros, which means mounted courier, which is a, a messenger. Mm -hmm. uh, in ancient Persian, they're messengers. Uh, in Hebrew, it's malak messenger uh so you know you've got this idea but 
in all kinds of societies, we see these. We see these in uh, Zoroastrianism, um, and, and, and the angels of Zoroastrian were large, monstrous beasts, sometimes with the heads of lions and the, or, or the bodies of animals and multi-wings, and they were, uh, they were very, I, I mean, almost monstrous in their appearance. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in, in ancient... Scary as fuck. They were. Uh, and they... And, and, and sometimes they were in in, in ancient Hebrew as well. Mm-hmm. You had uh, you, you had all these different angels, but there's these different levels of it. And and when you talk about angels, you're talking about something. Uh, you're using a very generic term. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're also using a lot of times a non-canonical, non-biblical term. Right. Okay. Because there's a bunch of terms for things that have all been lumped into this idea. Um, You've got uh, Malak, M-A-L-A-K-H, which means messenger of the gods. You've got uh, Malak Elohim, which is messenger of God. And those are both used in the Hebrew Bible. One, There's a distinct difference between messenger yeah. of the gods and messenger of God. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got Malak Yahweh, which is messenger of a specific God, right. the Hebrew God. And if they if there wasn't something different, I've got to wonder why did the Hebrews use three different terms for something there? Well, and and, and one thing you you have to wonder is was it the evolution where they they started to narrow down on one god, or was it they were like, well, messenger of the gods, and they were like just the general term, and they were like, yeah, yeah, so it's like Zeus too, and they were like, well, no, no, messenger of the god, and they were yeah. like. Oh yeah, like uh, you know, I don't know, Aphrodite or yeah, whoever they're yeah. got. No, 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 Yahweh. Yahweh. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and maybe it was. Maybe I don't it was. know. I don't know. But you, you see know. it. You, you, I, 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 I question that because where you see a lot of these are in the same. You see them all used in Genesis. You see them all used in the Book of Enoch. Uh, so, so, so I wonder about it. There's even something called the Theophonic Angel. Uh, which is interesting because this is God himself coming down as an angel and speaking to you. That's something a little bit different even than, uh, than, than the others. Um, if you see this, there's, Daniel is the first canonical uh, uh, book of the Bible that, that, that mentions angels. And it actually it talks about angels specifically. Uh, in Daniel 9.21, they talk about Michael as God's holy fighter, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that, that, that's Gabriel is God's primary messenger. In Daniel 10, 13, God, uh, Michael is God's holy fighter. They start getting personalities at this point, and you start getting different choruses of angels mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and different roles for them. Um, I find this absolutely fascinating uh, be, because there's, there seems to be a role for them they, where each one has their, or each school has their own purpose. But we can't agree on what the what, what the schools are. Now, I, I'm a Christian person. Uh, if you asked me, do I believe in angels? I would say that that that, that I do. Now, if you threw some of these terms at me, says, do you believe in this? No, I don't think I do. Uh, you know, I I, uh, I I kind of the same way I am with with a lot of religion. I believe generally in religion, but there's a lot of aspects that I have problems with. So I start looking at this, and and, and I wonder about it because. They can't even agree on, 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 you know, where this comes from. I found uh, uh, a, a page by Michael Coogan, who's a, a biblical scholar, and he starts talking about this idea of, uh, of angels. And he believes that what angels are, they developed as Judeo-Christianity went from polytheistic to monotheistic. I've actually heard this, this theory before. And, and all it was is they were taking these, these lesser gods and they were kind of being demoted to something else because now we are a monotheistic religion, but we don't want to let go of, of, you know, of, of the other powers. Of, of these, other, these other gods. Right. Somebody has to take care of things. I even heard some uh, uh, Judeo-Christian... Uh, uh, no, sorry. Uh, uh, I think this was Judaism, mm. but I've I've heard versions where they believe that angels are so prevalent in the world that every every blade of grass has its own angel. That's just encouraging uh, to grow. That, that's grow. in Ka- that's in the Kabbalistic yep. Uh, uh, yep. tradition. Uh, so it, it's something a little bit different. Um, but but I you know I wonder about this because when I look at it and I start seeing these from a I try to look at it from a 
uh, intellectual, historical perspective, and I see there's a messenger of the gods. Well, that sounds like Hermes in Greece. Mm-hmm. There's, yeah. uh, you know, there's a warrior of the gods. Well, okay, that sounds uh, like, like any number of gods. Yeah. There's, a, there's a light bringer. That sounds like Apollo. Uh, and, and I start wondering if there's not some, someone guarding the gates. Yeah, there's not something there, though, yeah. because it seems to be so intrinsic in society. And, and, and that's why I, you know, I always come back to this idea that I believe that there is a God. I believe there's something out there, but I don't always know what it is. Mm -hmm. Because when I look around, uh, there seems to be some consistency throughout religions uh, out there. There, 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 There's something out there seeking to explain, and over and over again, we we find the same basic explanations. Um, So so, so I don't know. What, what, What are your thoughts on that? I'm just a little curious. So uh, I don't think that that consistency of explanation necessarily uh, derives from itself correctness. Now, I think it does derive from itself popularity, which it, it almost in, in modern society seems akin to correctness. Um, you can vote an idea into into its own righteousness. Yeah, okay. Um, but we can also see other ideas that we know to be patently false. Yep. Um, uh, uh, helio, uh, uh, not heliocentric, he- the, uh, uh, geocentric theory. Geocentric theory was was very broad and universal across yeah, cultures absolutely. without spread, and yet we 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 kind of you know uh, uh, have have mostly disproven it, at least in the way it was spoken then. Sure. Um, I do want to ask you uh, a, a question. Occurred to me. I'm, I'm going to chase a little rabbit here, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um. You, you, you mention a belief in a God, and, and you've talked about that, and, and it, it, it kind of seems to border somewhere between Judeo-Christianity and de- yeah, deism. Yeah, yeah that, that, I think that's where I fall. Yeah. Um, if, let's let's say there was a, a, a God, a being that, yep. that made the first action, and let's even say it was sentient, yeah. right? And it created first action. Would it at all change your views or your beliefs or maybe devastate you in some way if you found out that that first action was completely accidental? Let's say it was a, a giant, you know, bovine creature and it farted, and then that's what created the universe, yeah, that right? Yeah, that would change everything to me because uh, part of part of my belief, and, and I've said this before, yeah. is that I, I look around at the world and I just can't rationalize in my mind that all this happened from a cosmic accident. Okay. Yeah, you um, see the intentionality yeah, in the universe. It, 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 there, 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 there seems to be intentionality there. There seems to be something there. Um, I don't buy the idea that, uh, you know, that we've talked about it before, that you, you put a thousand monkeys in a room and, uh, with typewriters and in enough, enough time they'll make the works of Shakespeare. I don't buy that. I think there has to be a plan there uh, to have something as complex as we have. Uh, and even when you point out to me the scientific spots, because I'm, I'm an evolutionist too, yeah. uh, you know, and show me how, how it evolved over time, it still seems to follow a plan. Yeah. Okay. Fair uh, so, so I would, I, I would have a hard time with that. Um, but at the same time, I have a hard time with a lot of canonical <laughs> religion too. Uh, yeah. I look at, you know, uh, the Bible, uh, I, I, you know, it's the word of God. I, I can accept that, but it's the word of God through the hand of man, and man messes up sometimes. So you have to have to have to look at all that. Um, and and when I can look at this this thing with angels and see that you know sometimes there's four choruses of angels, sometimes there's eight choruses of angels. We can't decide about this. Um, we can't even decide uh, uh, you know which books of the Bible are canonical. And a lot of these 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 angel des- descriptions are in the Book of Enoch. Which is not canonical at all in in Judeo Christianity, at least not most Judeo Christianity. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's always the weirdos out there. But it is canonical in in Islam. It is canonical in the Russian Orthodox Church. I don't believe it is in Greek Orthodox or Roman Catholic, but it is canonical in Russian Orthodox. So you start seeing this stuff and you wonder about it. Um, so Anna, did you have any thoughts on the prevalence of angels and what implications that has? Or no. Okay. I want to talk about some of these uh, these ideas of angels. 
uh, that are out there and, and the different types. And, and the biggest reason is because I want to I, I, I want to kind of see if we can reason anything out here. OK, uh, uh, Maimonides, which was a, a, an Aristotelian philosopher, uh, Maimonides, pretty famous philosopher, uh, probably one of the smartest men that that, that had ever lived. He's, he's he followed Aristotle. He's the guy that kind of originally came up with the idea of phylum and all. Uh, he didn't call it that, but of dividing animals into into families, uh, which is a pretty right uh, unique idea for the time period. Um, he came up or, or he came came up through through a reading of the Bible, largely the Book of Enoch, and came up with this idea of this hierarchy of angels. Um, I'm not going to talk about all of them. So basically, you're saying he just really liked hierarchies. Yeah, yeah, I, but but that's part of the time period too. Yeah, no. It was all about classification of things. Right. So I think if you look at, at 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 what he you know what he did, he was he was attempting to apply the rules of science to this, mm-hmm. which I think is, is is important to 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 at least look at. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got the uh, the Ophanim, which comes from the Book of Ezekiel. Uh, and this this recognizes the angels as the wheels in the sky, the burning wheel that you see in the sky in Ezekiel. Um, uh, sometimes it's seen as a uh, and, and, as as this, this this burning whirlwind, and it's what drove the chariot across the across the heavens. So this they would have seen this as what carries the sun across, I suppose. Um, and again, that seems to be something that's that we have seen in a lot of traditions. You've got the Thunderbird in American tradition. You've got Apollo in the uh, in, in the Greek and Roman tradition. You, you know, over and over again, you, you've got this idea. Um, uh, you've got the, the Hashmalim, which are seen as the embodiment of fire. Uh, Hashmalim, in fact, has come down through Hebrew language to mean electricity. They've taken that word to mean elect- mm. mean ele- electrical spark is what it is what it comes out to. Um, so the idea of this was a lot of times seen as a sparks, sparks, you know, in a whirlwind and stuff, kind of like lightning in a, in a storm. Well, that sounds like a lightning God to me with mm-hmm. Thor and stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm seeing that there's an explanation for this stuff. So what we're seeing is the unparalleled adaptation by Christianity of other, lang- of other religions as a means of, I, think I don't think it's unparalleled at all. Yeah, I think unparalleled is a little unfair. I, th- I think it's something that happens in, in, in all traditions. But, but I you're think s- they are f- have proven to be better at it. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I, I I think we see that in our in our society because that's what we're around. Um, I I I think we lived in India. We might see things yeah, differently. I, yeah, or, I, I, think I guess so. I was talking worldwide, but uh, fine. And, and, and I'm disagreeing with that. I right. don't think it's a worldwide thing. I, uh, uh, but they're obviously very good at it. They're also a fairly latecomer religion to some of this stuff compared to, uh, t- to some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would stand to reason that the more recent you are, the more that you would, would, would do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least it would stand to reason to me. Um, the, uh, the Elohim or godly beings... Uh, and what I find interesting about this is the Elohim comes down to, to us through Hebrew as godly beings. It's a type of angel. But that is actually a Canaanite word that they, they use for the pantheon of all the gods. They called all the gods the Elohim. Mm-hmm. So again, that, 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 that shows a, a kind of cultural borrowing in here that, that I find interesting. Um, uh, the cherubim or the Haggagaya, the guardian deities, these are the ones that for some reason uh, at Valentine's Day, we always make the cher- cherubim, the, uh, the little baby angels with the, mm-hmm. uh, you know, which is uh, really borrowed from Eros, the, uh, the, the Roman love, minor love god. Uh, but the cherubim actually were very, very ferocious uh, angels. They, uh, they had four faces. They had the face of a man, a lion, an eagle, uh, and, and, and a child, a cherub. Uh, I can't like all at once or they all at once sweat? all at once. And what I find interesting, if you read about them, uh, they, the head, yeah, that uh, they had the wings and they had, they had a head on all sides. So, so oh, it was like a, a cube or it was something. like a cube. And, and the reason they said this is because these, uh, these angels could face, they faced all four directional points on the compass at one time. So they don't have a front or a back. They're just this, they're this, uh, lo- this like all seeing monstrous, um, uh, beast, they're they're. Um, I, I find that interesting. 
um, again, because if you look at, at, at Persian or you look at Babylonian, you see, you see the idea of the lion with the wings and the head of a man, and you see all, you know, all, all, all this mixing of this, and it seems to be a, a, a way of, of doing that. Um, now I want to talk about, about one last one that, 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 that I find the most interesting, and, and this is the one that, that really sold me on doing this, uh, and that's the Ben, ben Elohim. Uh, the Ben Elohim are, the, are called the sons of godly beings. Uh, these are the angels. That they were the lowest chorus of angels. They were the most like man. Um, these are also the ones that, when, according to the Bible, when man was invented, uh, God invented man above the angels in hierarchy. Even though angels were more powerful, angels were supposed to uh, honor man. And these were the ones that were unable to do that. They were unable to recognize man as a higher creation than they were. Um, they have magical powers, of course not. Well, sure. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't actually get where we're supposed to get it either. But uh, you know, uh, well, well, uh, you know, well, the the thought being that that God made man in His own image, and He didn't make the angels in His own image. He I'm, made the I'm angels as something else. I'm going to high five my local Ben Elohim um, right here. Uh, <laughs> but the sorry, go ahead. I, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to people that do believe this. I have some issues with it, uh, but I don't want to disrespect people that, that do believe I mean, believe. that's fine. I disagree uh, with you. Uh, uh, that, that, yeah. that, that, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, but, but what I love about this story, and, and I, I do think it's a story, yeah. is uh, it comes out of the book of Enoch, which, again, is a non-canonical. Um, and the book of Enoch tells a story about the Ben Elohim looking down on, uh, on, on mankind and seeing... Uh, women and and falling in love with them, they mm-hmm. were so beautiful. They were so uh, they, they they were so attractive. Particularly, they had their hair down and they they fell in love with this long hair that the women had, and they came down and had sex with them. Um, the Ben Elohim came down and raped women. This is what happens in the story, uh, which is why later on it becomes non canonical in the. Uh, uh, when, when, when they're establishing yeah. the Christian. I, I, I want to go yeah. back to something I said earlier and, yeah. and, and clarify. I just realized how that may have came out. I wasn't saying I disagree with you that we don't want to disrespect them. I agree with you that we don't want yeah. to disrespect them. What I was saying is uh, that's fine. We don't have to disrespect them. I just disagree with them. And that's fine. Yeah. I, 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 and, and I do too. Yeah. I don't I yeah. don't agree with this. Uh, uh, but I think yeah, it's I something that's worth that's worth looking at. Yeah, yeah I forgot they were um, rapists, so I'm going to take that high five back now. Uh, so, but but these Ben Elohim had had done this, um, fall in love with the daughters of men, came down, had children with them, and those children end up becoming the Nephilim. Um, if you know the story of the Nephilim, they are uh, you know they're half angel, half man, and they're giants. Uh, um, Hagrid. Uh, no, these these are no, are that really tall Asian basketball player. These are are um, monstrous creatures. They are uh, like how giant are we talking? Let, let me just they don't they don't come out and say a, say a okay. size. It's not like you know later you know later on where they talk about uh, Goliath and, and we can measure. So Goliath was not one of these. Goliath he was, was just not a one. Big Goliath was dude. a big man. These were giants. So they were bigger than Goliath. Yeah, uh, and uh, what I find interesting. What I find interesting about this, though, is the fact that we also see this in a, in a lot of beliefs. Think about the uh, the Roman uh, Roman and Greek gods. The fact that the original gods were called the Titans, mm-hmm. and they were giants. That's and, exactly what I was thinking about. And, yeah, and they were giants, and they were they were uh, they were not moral gods. They were weak. They were uh, they were sexual beings. They were. Uh, that they 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 had all the weaknesses of man. They were primitive. Well, well so did these. Yeah. So did these. Uh, interestingly enough, the um, according to to Jewish tradition, particularly Kabbalist, I can't say it. Kabbalist, Kab- Kabbalistic. I can't say it. Is that it? Kabbalistic. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, the tradition, which is the mystic form of, of Judaism, uh, that these existed until the flood. 
and the flood is what destroyed the 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 giants. So it, 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 it's what is what wiped them out. Because they were too um, busy banging. Oh wait, sorry, that was tight. Well, because they they weren't they weren't brought onto the the, the ark. Yeah. Well, if you look at the Greek tradition, mm-hmm. they talk about the uh, the the giants, the titans. Uh, part of the, part of the way that the titans were destroyed was that there was a king mm-hmm. in Greece who was told that there was going to be a giant flood and you're to build a giant chest mm-hmm. and you're going to put everything valuable in it. And at the last minute, they, the, the, the sons of man, several of them jumped into this and they ended up uh, surviving and the giants died. The titans died. Uh, and those end up becoming the new gods of Olympus. Um, when you look at uh, the Chinese tradition, they talk about the pyramids there. The Chinese said that those pyramids were built by the first, uh, the first Chinese kings who were not of this world and were giants. And they say that what destroyed them, well, there was a great flood, the Diluvian period. Uh, so it seems to be that there's this idea throughout Is, are, time. Are there any traditions in the Bible that say that these things were destroyed in the flood? Well, um, it, not in canonical Bible, but but again, if you get into the Kabbalistic tradition, there's books that are not accepted in uh, in, in Judeo Christian, but are accepted in uh, Kabbal Judaism mm-hmm. that do say that. Okay. So so again, you you've got to you've got to wonder about this kind of stuff. Um, so I, I I find that that really interesting that um, uh, that there's 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 a link there between these. Um, and the historian in me has to look at that and go, there's, there's, there seems to be a common history, or a common lore at least. Now, do I believe there were, there were giants? I don't. Uh, do I believe that angels came down and, 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 and raped women? I don't. But I think that, there, has, that, that there, there is something in the background that all of these shared, and they've all interpreted it, and, and the story has come down. I, I do love society's very shallow view of angels because, you know, what we talk about here is, is a very traditionalistic view of it because all the time you'll hear, especially in the area we live, that, that one southern woman is like, you know, I was having trouble and then I felt an angel come and lay their hands on me. And you never hear someone respond with, what, what, what kind? Because that could have been bad. Yeah, they yeah. could have been getting yeah. rapey, you know. <laughs> but uh, hey, I'm just saying, my car broke down one time and some... Firemen angels came and and helped me yeah, well, move my car. But yeah. but, but you know the other side of that is that they're they're this is the, when you look at it there are there are so many examples of near death experiences where people ex, people talk about somebody coming and talking to them and and and, and you know saving them and. The commonality between them is tremendous. I think something is there. Now, I will tell you what I think it is. Uh, I don't believe that there's heavenly angels coming down, but I believe there's something in our mind when, as our body starts to shut down, that we start bringing up memories, we start bringing up things that uh, that, that help us cope with things. I think it's a coping mechanism. But do I? I do not have a problem saying. That that coping mechanism, I don't have a problem with calling that an angel, because okay, yeah. I, 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 you know, there's there's something that's been pre-programmed into you that's coming down and telling you don't give up, uh, you, you know, pull through, and we've seen it over and over again. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think that that's part of my understanding of religion is I'm trying to reason it. I'm I, I have no issue with a god that has programmed into us the ability that something is going to come uh, to our brain whenever we get to that point that says, come back, fight, fight, fight. And call it an angel, call it a chemical uh, action in your brain. I don't care. To me, there's some, there, there, there mm-hmm. is something there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, so, uh, you, you know, when I'm looking at this, that's kind of where, where I'm coming from. So let's talk about, uh, about angels in a, in a couple of, uh, other things, and this is going to be a, be a shorter show because I, 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 I mean, it's kind of a, a bizarre topic for us. But it, angels are um, 
You want to talk about this beer first? Yeah, let's, let's see. Yeah, because I don't really have a whole lot that I want to do. Yeah. So I, I want to talk about Islam. I want to talk about fallen angels a little bit. But uh, and, and, and they are not the same thing. Yeah. So I don't want, want to make that connection. But let's talk about this beer. Who would like to start this one? I would actually okay. like to start this okay. one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm, uh, I'm thoroughly disappointed. Uh, this beer comes in when, when, when it first hits the tip of the tongue and the palate. Uh, it it tastes like you're you're about to get what what is going to be a, a really good quad. It starts off really well, like they started with a quality quad. Um, one thing, oh boy, one thing that happens whenever you uh, bourbon barrel age a beer is it starts to develop a little bit of a sour note, um, and the the sour in this beer is really prevalent. Uh, you can uh, uh, more than than many other uh, uh, bourbon barrel stouts I've had. In the tradition between the tradition, the transition between the quad taste and the sour taste is abrupt. It's not smooth. It's very sharp. And after that, both tastes fade so quickly from the palate, and you're left with something that is akin to me to the aftertaste of taking a shot. The alcohol is very full really? in this beer. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so all that said, I'm giving it a one seven. Really? Really? A one seven. One seven. By the way, if you weren't watching the show uh, and just listening, I uh, I overflowed my beer and had to walk off and get a, a a towel here. So if you're playing our game at home, finish your beer. Yeah. Um, I, I spilled. Uh, you want me to go next or you want to go next? So um, I actually find this to be really pleasant to drink. Um, it, it's got kind of a, it's got some cherry notes to it, but it's not, a lot of times when you experience cherry in a beer, it's a very sweet kind of deep, rich yeah. flavor. Yeah. This is cherry-esque almost. Yeah. Um, I can taste the, the fruity flavor of it. Without it being overwhelming, it's still a very beery taste. Um, it could stand to have a little bit more flavor. It could stand to have a little bit more body. Um, I do not think it deserves a 1.7 because it is dr it is enjoyable to drink. Um, as far as afterward feeling like you took a shot, I thoroughly disagree. Yeah, um, I do too. Which is why I come in at a 3.3. .3. Wow, that's like a it. big difference. I like it a mm -hmm. lot. I have a problem with this beer in the fact that I'm enjoying the beer. I think this is a good beer. If you handed it to me, I would, uh, I would love you for giving this beer to me. And I think it's a terrible quad. Does that make sense at all? Yeah, it does. Um, it does. So I don't, I don't know what to do with this beer. Because I would give it, uh, I'd give it a two five uh, as far as just enjoying a beer. If you're looking for a beer, I think this is a good beer. It's a, 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 a pretty much a benchmark beer for what I would like, but it is a terrible, terrible quad, uh, and, and I'm gonna have to hit it for that. So um, I'm gonna go two one. Okay. Uh, uh, That's so, a wide spread on this beer. It is. It's, it, With it, a it, wide... It's, it's a really wide spread. Uh, and, and surprisingly how it came out because of, you know, the different f tastes that we have, I, I don't think anybody came out where I would have thought they would have. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if we don't need to take another look at quads. Uh, maybe there's been some evolution here lately because we've actually had a few quads recently They've and all been hit like that. The thing that we keep saying is there's not enough flavor for it to be yeah. a quad. Well, see, and, and I actually disagree on this one. I, like I said, I think it started out as a great quad. It was it was the bourbon barrel stuff that they didn't seem to do it properly to me. So see, I and think, I love the bourbon barrel yeah. part, but I think it's a terrible quad. I don't think yeah. it's got the full flavor of a quad. So, uh, so. Uh, so anyway, what we're telling you is this is a beer that you're either going to love or you're not going to like. <laughs> you know, it, it, who knows? This is an all over the place beer. Um, I'll play a game. Yes. So this is, if I remember right, an eleven point two. Eleven point yeah. something. It's 11. a Cosby territory. ABV. So this is a Cosby beer. Yep. 
Um, if you are trying to Call him before he went to get prison. this to seal the deal, um, be careful. Don't don't buy a whole lot of them. Maybe use this as the accent on the cake of your fantastic personality. But I do think that this is the sort of high quality fun beer that is going to push you over the top. Don't okay. But I would say be careful. So uh, as much as I hit this thing, uh, I am going to put this in both a mix it up beer and a try it beer, uh, because honestly, for for as much as I think they got wrong. Uh, this is the first time I've seen a quad with a bourbon barrel aging, and, and I think you you need to try it to to it's it's something different. It's something you don't see every day, and I do applaud that in the beer, uh, but I, I, I'm not going to bank on this thing. Yeah, I I, I would agree. Uh, not a first first date beer for sure. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, mixing it up. I, I would agree. Uh, uh, again, not a lawnmower beer. It's too much beer for a lawnmower, but. Uh, uh, it's also not a, uh, you know, I want to grade papers, papers yeah. with it beer. I don't know. This is... Um, it's something different. This is a beer that I could see us drinking if you're sitting around arguing politics with your buddies. I just... Yeah. Uh, of course, you have, if you have three or four of these, you might hit your buddy over the head with a uh, bottle after Sounds the, good. the argument. At that point, uh, it's Anna always wants to hit me whenever we're doing these shows, so... I wasn't even saying I wanted to hit you. Just but, people. But you were thinking it, weren't you? Mm, just people. Uh huh. Uh-huh. You know, in 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 role playing games, glass weaponry is very high weaponry, and I think at that point you just have a glass club. It's it's not a beer bottle; it's a <laughs> glass club. I don't know what the fuck makes you think you're so special that you're the one I always want to fight. Because the world revolves around me, haven't well, we figured that no. out yet, yet? No, it doesn't. <laughs> yes. Maybe he thinks that that you perceive him as a very weak enemy and would I, be an easy takedown. I, I, oh, I, I can see that. I think that everybody either wants to fuck me or kill me, and uh, you know. Is there I, any overlap there? Uh, sometimes they want to fuck me, then kill me. Uh, <laughs> sometimes see, they see, want to kill him, then fuck him. For instance, I, I think... Because at least when he's dead, he's quiet. I think Anna wants to kill me, and I think John wants to fuck me. So, you know, it kind of it's kind of worked out. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of necrophilia. I just, <laughs> like lay, I just like to lay back and open up a cold one, you know? <laughs> oh, that's, that's disgusting. All right. Uh, with that, let's get back to angels. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's Speaking great. of fucking dead people. <laughs> I didn't fuck dead people. Uh, they fuck people with long hair. Uh, by the way, uh, there there is there's argument about this, but we're going to move into Islam, and there are some people, uh, I found several uh, biblical historians that argue that the reason why uh, hair is put up in, in, in Islam originally, now it's not so much now, but originally the reason why that was put there was because um, the angels were first attracted to the long hair and the immodest look, and putting it up That's why was I a cut way my of hair short. putting it up was a way of protecting your, uh, you know, your uh, sexual identity. Your I chastity. guess your chastity. Um, I just wear a belt. I don't think to. <laughs> that's going to fester. Uh, I, 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 I don't. I don't think that's why people do it today, and I don't mm-hmm. want anybody thinking that, it, that that I'm going that way. Uh, Islam. Uh, Angels are throughout the Quran, uh, which would be expected because the Quran is basically the Old Testament, the New Testament, plus the books of Muhammad, right? Uh, so you've got the uh, got, got these angels all the way through, but they 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 take a little different uh, uh, position in Islam. Uh, and I'm, I'm by no means an Islamic scholar. I am talk. I, I am giving you information that I'm getting from other people. So forgive me if I get some of this uh, wrong. I'm, I'm sure I do. Uh, but while the Quran describes angels as messengers, uh, sometimes they have two wings, sometimes three, sometimes four different pairs of wings. Um, they that they don't tend to be as um, as violent or as as involved in interfering in, in, in the day-to-day affairs of man. They are really more of guides or messengers. Uh, the, the, the thing that they, they do the most in Islam is, uh, uh, in, in, in specifically the Quran, outside of the Old and New Testament, is these are the guys that guided Muhammad through his night voyage mm-hmm. through the heavens. Um, so I, I, I find that interesting. Um, by the way, the term jinn comes out of the Quran. Like the booze? Jinn, which which no, in, oh, genie. which in English is genie, right. comes from angel. Uh, it, 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 it's it, one of those weird ones that starts with a D, right? Uh, yeah, D G I N N. 
Yeah. Um, but it, but in English it comes in as genie. And like uh, one of the things that 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 in some Islamic beliefs, by no means all, uh, one of the things you can do is you can summon uh, through you can summon angels and you can uh, force them to do your will, which is what a genie is. Uh, mm. Not unlike what you see Solomon do with his magic and his incantations in the Old Testament, he summons angels. He even summons demons uh, to, to to do his will, um, and and that's something that that's very Old Testament and very Quran. It's not so much New Testament. Did any of those jinn look like a blue Will Smith? Uh, like a Will Smith, like okay, a, so blue a blue Robin Williams. No, a blue Will Smith. No, no, th- 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 I think they look like a he blue Robin know. Williams. Do you not know about blue Will Smith? I don't know what the fuck you're talking. about. They are about. making a live action Aladdin movie, and w- there's a blue Will Smith that is genie. Will Smith oh, that's is a genie. Gonna be terrible. <laughs> it's gonna be terrible. Nobody but Robin Williams should ever play the genie. Um, you're gonna make me cry well, on air. You know what? They tried to get Williams him. He but wasn't. He wasn't available. Um, yeah, they kind of hung him out to dry on that one. Uh, all, wait, all you need is a Ouija board. Uh, and apparently, terrible. if you believe in angels, it's totally a thing you can do. Except he's not an angel. Um, uh, that, by the way, is also something that that uh, a lot of modern Christians uh, believe that angels are. That, that when you die, you go to heaven and become an angel. That's yeah. that, that's not biblical. You don't become an angel. Angel is a separate being. Yeah. Well, maybe if you're a bad human, you get demoted to angel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, if you believe in the chorus of angels, with angels being below humans, you would be getting demoted. Uh, yeah. Demoted with more powers, which is kind of cool. Well, which which kind of goes to show just like how, and, and you know, chop it up, to, chalk it up to lack of knowledge, or chalk it up to. To the 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 whole um, absurdity of it, but how little people actually believe in the the position yeah. of man over angels yeah. and the fact that they think they're going to get the reward of becoming an angel. But I think that's why because you get wings, motherfucker. I think that's why we can. Uh, uh, you got that idea that you can summon and control them, though, is because you know you're somehow higher than them in the chorus. See, I think when I die, I'm going to turn into Birdman. <laughs> The the bad movie or the 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 the, the, te- the cartoon from the nineteen. I'll take either one at this point. Bird I just want the wing. Man. Yeah. I love that cartoon. Hannibal I'm gonna Bear. turn into fire and just destroy. That's everything. a type of angel. Um, all right. So uh, the last one I want to talk about uh, is, is fallen angels. Um, the idea that there was a revolt among heaven. And by the way, this is not entirely biblical, and it's also not entirely not biblical. It kind of goes to interpretation. Uh, if you if you read the, the the very idea of Satan, by the way, is not entirely biblical. It's a uh, uh, shaitan is an Islamic word that means uh, the opponent or uh, uh, it, it, it's not even evil. It's just uh, it's somebody that tests you. It's uh, the the yang yeah. to the yeah yin. yeah. And uh, if you read the book of Job. Uh, the, the the Satan the Shaitan is not an evil character. The uh, it's there to test Job, and its purpose was to test. Uh, if you go into uh, the, the last days of, of Christ, when the Satan, uh, you know, when Jesus is out is out in for forty desert. days in the yeah. wilderness, the Satan comes to him and tests him for forty days. At the end of forty days, angels come and feed him and and, and take care of him. But the Satan yeah, is take care of him. the Satan is doing God's will. It's not something that that is evil in that point. Later on, later tradition is going to change the Satan to um, to a person, uh, to, or to an angel, a fallen angel, and it's going to conflate the Lucifer story uh, with the, the 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 Satan story. And you're going to get this idea of of the these angels that fell. Now, uh, that's going to be in the modern period associated with Satanism. <coughs> so it's going to kind of resemble the shift in uh, Hades, who at yeah, at, which, which was just the underworld, yeah, to devil, yeah, yeah, very much like that. Um, in fact, the did you know that the, that the belief in hell is not really a biblical idea? Mm-hmm. Hell is a Greek uh, translation of the word Gethsemane, which means place of the skull which our image of hell as a burning place is because Gethsemane was the place outside the gates of Jerusalem where they burnt their, their waste, their yeah. trash. 
um, and 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 that became our image of this. Uh, yeah, well, when they talk about worms and, yeah. and all that, yeah, that's yeah. the worms and the trash. Yeah, it's literally what it was. Um, but the satanic, satanic temple, uh, the modern satanic temple, promotes the idea uh, that that Satan led the fallen angels, and Satan was the angel Arcade. Arcade appears in again in a uh, a non canonical uh, book of the Bible. And Arcade was an angel who organized a revolt against God. Uh, uh, it, one of the ones, you know, the revolt that went down uh, and formed the Nephilim. Well, Arcade, according to the Satanic Temple at least, their reading of it is the reason why the revolt happened was because the angels learned the secrets of science, and that caused them to rebel against the mysticism and all no- omniscience of God. Hmm. That to me is interesting. Hmm. Hmm. That you've already got that that idea that science and religion are in opposition to now, each other. Now, when was this? When this? Uh, well, this is uh, th- this is a modern interpretation okay. of, uh, of it. But 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 arcade is a it, it's a real story. Now, their reasoning behind it is that you know that they they read into it the idea of science. Yeah. Uh, science wasn't even a term at this point. Okay, natural, yeah, yeah. You know, you know, natural philosophy yeah, is what we would have called it. Um, but the, the, these these fallen angels appear uh, almost nowhere. That the, the, there, there really isn't a story in the Bible that that talk about about, about fallen angels or cast out angels. Uh, it's something that's that has been interpreted because of of other things. Um, uh, Abraham talks about that. Talks in the scriptures about. Angels who were cast out of uh, out of heaven for sinning, but he doesn't even say they go to Gethsemane or they go to hell. He just says they were cast out. Yeah. That to, to to him in the Old Testament, hell was the absence of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They weren't burning. They were. It wasn't this eternal idea. It was just that angels. They were no longer Daddy in the wasn't presence happy of God. Uh, which, which again, I find absolutely fantas- uh, uh, fantastic. Fantastic. Um, so anyway, the rest of this I've kind of talked about already, but I, I, I kind of wanted to address this and, and ask you, uh, you know, do you think there's something in, inherent in, uh, in humanity that, that, that calls to explain this? Or do you think that maybe there was, there was something back there that they're explaining through lore? No, I mean, I, th- I think there, there is something inherent in humanity. I mean, we have determined that there is a God part of the brain and even surmise that it probably exists f- to deal with loneliness. Uh, when we are isolated, we are creatures that are not designed for that, and so we can invent uh, a, a pack to run with, let's say. Um, and, and we can... We are pack animals. Yeah, and we can even demonstrate this in the lab. Uh, there, we, we know the part of the brain, we can use a helmet that uses magnetic resonance to stimulate that part of the brain, and people feel a presence in the room, much like they do when they're in religious chapels and stuff like that. Um, so I don't we, think that does anything. I don't think that means anything. Well, it, it means there is a part of the brain that deals with this, whether or not. Yeah, but but I'm not running through my life with a helmet on my head doing this. So so. Well, I mean that's not the only way to stimulate a part of the brain. Yeah, we we know this. So the the point is the point is there is a part of the brain that does this. That is a fact. Yeah, I agree. agree. I okay. agree. So uh, that said, if you do through that or through any other means come to an idea that there is something outside of your realm, outside of your world, uh, there has to be some kind of means, some bridge between you and this thing for communication. Now, maybe I can talk to it, but then you have to explain why the thing I'm talking to doesn't match with the thing you're talking to and, and all this. And I think angels are a natural progression of, of that, that, that bridge that, that arises between uh, 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 the great God and, and, and the me. Okay. Madam Mistress? Um, I don't know. You don't know? So, like, you say, well, I don't run around with a helmet on my head, and yet um, this idea of, like, haunted houses. Yeah. Um, there are instances we can see or, or we can re- uh, reproduce where um, a house will have faulty wiring 
And that wiring can produce a sense in people of there being a presence of something. Um, and that people who are prone to believing in things like angels and whatnot um, will attribute that to a haunting of some sort. Um, and that to eliminate the haunting, you simply fix the wiring. Um, and, and so y you say that, like, I don't go around with a, a helmet on my head, but there are um, circumstances that can arise in our everyday lives that actually um, prompt the observance of a an otherworldly being. Well, and and to to the helmet thing, I, I think I think we attribute too much to the helmet. Uh, there was actually in our, our last show on addiction, there was a, a thing I didn't talk about, but where where the 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 segment that that the doctor was talking about was on um, how we value uh, immediate gratification over long term gratification, sure. and they have a helmet they can put on people's heads yeah. that will change how much they value short term versus long term things. They'll ask them questions, they'll put them in a room, they'll put this helmet on their head, and their answers will change based on having this helmet. Now that part of the brain is active normally and through normal things. We just know we can specifically trigger it with a helmet. So saying that the helmet is or isn't there at a certain okay, point in time. I can see that. It, you know, I can yeah. see that. Um, otherwise, I mean, I think that we are predisposed to find um, things to explain things that we determine to be unexplainable. I would agree. And I think that we tend to reach for things that have been previously accepted to be uh, explanations for those unexplainable things. And so, because um, angels and otherworldly beings have been used and accepted by other members of our pack and extended pack in the past, um, we tend to continue to reach out to those things. I can agree with that. And uh, uh I, I would go so far as to say that, that, that I wouldn't even have a problem with saying that the angel is a uh, chemical action in my mm -hmm. brain or an electronic action in my brain. Uh, if it's having that purpose, it seems to, to be something that's uh, designed. It seems to be a design. And, uh, uh, yeah, until I find another explanation, I... Every, it does appear mm -hmm. to be a design to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and whatever you call it, I don't care. I don't care if you call it an angel or you call it a synapse firing. Uh, if it's having that purpose, it seems to be something that's there. Fair so, enough. Um, I, I, just, I do think that we need to be open-minded enough to look at things and go, let's look at the science. Let's look at what's going on. And if it proves that, that, that we're wrong, if it proves we're wrong, let's accept that. If it proves that we should question it, then we should question it. Yeah, you know, fair enough. Even if you're, even if you you can't prove one way or the other, question it. It's okay yeah. to question. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and and that's kind of kind of where I am. Uh, and I've moved a long way. I've moved a long way from where I once was. Uh, so you know, that's kind of how it is. Well, I don't know if y'all enjoyed it or not, but I went down this this rabbit hole with this because of that 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 uh, article I read, and I really did kind of enjoy studying it. I thought it was interesting getting to look at 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 the history of angels versus what seventy would you say seventy percent of Americans yeah yeah seventy five probably are actually believing in versus you know uh, the word we use yeah and, and, and again I I wonder yeah. I wonder who they asked and how they asked it yeah. you know yeah. I think if you're asking people as they're walking out of a church you're going to get a different answer if you call in on a Sunday afternoon you're probably going to get a different question if you go outside uh, the bar you're going to get a different one yeah, yeah maybe maybe yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, we just have to see. Yeah. Well, you want to close us out? So anyway, um, if you've enjoyed this show, we'd love to hear from you. You can hit us up on social media by searching Six Pack Philosophy or go to our website, uh, which is sixpackphilosophy.com. You can do comments and email and shit from there. 
Um, if you want to support the show, make sure we can keep providing you super cool, awesome content. You can go to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy and become a patron. Or you can buy some super cool swag at teespring.com slash store slash sixpackphilosophy. Uh, basically, if you want to find us, do a search of, on your preferred search engine of six-pack philosophy. I like dog pile. Uh, I use Yahoo. Anyway. SGs. So anyway, Jeez. thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it. We hope you have too. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 